and you, your your screen is showing the wrong one. There we are. There we go. Okay, so we're on. on you. Yep, so we're on. So hello, I'm on with Skeeter Green, and we are here to talk about RPGs because we're tired of RPG politics. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Any uh, anything happening in at any major conventions lately? Nope. <laughs> okay. So what do you got there, Zach? Well, first of all, I have the uh, I have the scene switch here for. Ooh, so I like it. Welcome to it, my friend. You helped name it and promote it. I really am very pleased. I have one of the shirts. Yeah, I know. And you've been advertising my show for almost two years. I uh, have. Isn't that awesome? So. There are some limited edition black shirts. And if you look, way, way. Right. Let's see if I can do this. Nope. Almost. Nope. Oh, no. I can't do it. Right there is one of the less limited edition burgundy shirts. There you have it. But anyway, so anyway, we're just, basically, we're. I'm going to use this uh, Matt streaming channel to talk about um, things that interest me. And that's about it. And uh, thanks to Skeeter, I got a title. And Skeeter is here to join me the first time. And I thought one of the most interesting ways to do this would be uh, I have 400 box sets or more in my office and because I have a problem. and That is excessive. <laughs> it is excessive. And uh, I pulled off three random box sets, and I was going to have Skeeter react to them in his opinion of those. And, I am a good reactor. And, and But first, Skeeter is going to check Uncle Matt's site to make sure we're live and the audio is working. Oh, am I? Yeah. Um. Hold, please. You bet. Uh, while looking for Uncle Matt's site on YouTube, we, found we came across <laughs> uh, a band known as Uncle Matt and the Shitbirds. Which uh, I uh, can maybe... neither confirm nor deny the the uh, the greatness of that band. But um, the best part is it's probably his moonlighting gig. I haven't seen any writing on him all week, so but you never know. Yeah, it could be. Uh, hey, we are live band, but on Uncle Matt's uh, D and D Studio live stream, and the audio's good. I week, oh, so Keith Hershey is actually watching yeah, us. Hey, hi, Keith. We are live. Hi, Keith. Okay, on, and he thinks the shit birds are funny. It is funny. <laughs> <laughs> I I think Keith it's Hershey insane, but okay. I'm hey, gonna, who am I to judge? I'm going to switch the camera so we can talk about the first of the box sets there, Skeeter Green. Let's do that. All right. So let's turn this off. And I have no preordained knowledge of what these box sets are going to be or if I know anything about them. And if I don't know anything about them, I will just make shit up. All right. Hold on. One of these will the turn The device is not available. It takes a second to switch. I hate it too. But the $600 wasn't what I was interested in paying. There we go. Should be right. There we go. And I swear it works. Skeeter saw it working earlier. There we go. I saw it working once. There we there go. There we go. Pendragon. By whom? Well. Pendragon. Chivalric role playing. By. Uh, Chaosium. And what's your opinion of Chaosium, Skeeter Green? Uh, I am a fan of Chaosium going, going way back. I, uh. I was a fan of Chaosium back when I was but a teen, a teen role player. I saw these fantastic box sets and I thought, ooh, the art is fantastic. And then I saw uh, Elric, the Stormbringer box set. And then I fell into a Call of Cthulhu box set, quite literally at a game store. And uh, just smashed the shit out of it and said nothing and walked out quickly. So I got to rediscover Chaosium as an adult and when I had money to buy things. And now I have an entire uh, gun uh, closet back there. No, it's not a safe. It's actually, it's like a hutch. Hmm. And I put shelves in it, and that is now my Cthulhu collection, part of it, uh, because that shit needs to be under lock and key. Well, some of it does. I'm Actually, I know this for a fact, but I'll explain that my history with Pendragon was only, I saw the ads in Dragon Magazine and thought, wow, that's cool. And I had exactly $6 to my name um, growing up, and my parents didn't want to hear it again about 
whether or not I need a new game. Because, you know, they didn't understand. They just plain didn't understand why, how important it was. But um, So I'd seen it in the store um, maybe a couple times. I'd seen the Dragon Magazine a lot. And I didn't know much about Arthurian legends except what was in the deities and demigods. So they kind of... That's where I heard it first. I know, I know. Like It was amazing. They didn't bring up all the Lancelot stuff that was interesting, though. They were trying to be, you know, on the sly, all the... All the crazy sex that goes on in chivalry. <laughs> but anyway. Well, hey, if you got your junk rubbing around in a metal armor suit all day, you're going to get a little randy. So, but, but I, I, afterwards, I had not played it, and I came back to uh, RPG games from not playing for 20 years in, like, 2012. In 2014, I was in a uh, Roll20 group that had just finished playing Swords and Wizardry, and they said they wanted to play Pendragon. And Did you actually take time out to have a life? uh yeah but i you motherfucker yeah n never again <laughs> nope. nope you can't get out when, michael curtis always says once you're in you can't get out yeah he signs some books for me that way i don't like michael <laughs> curtis did i say that out loud i'm sorry no <laughs> we love michael curtis yeah because he's and mr truth pig bombs. truth bombs dude i hate it yeah it's true so anyway i played pendragon um we played it two ways once we tried it with a gurps type engine and that was hard because of the large battles and groups went the speed of groups but then we actually played the first edition one and uh it was fun but i bought the box set off ebay when we were playing it of course you did and what is interesting and i will have to interject and point this out it's in english which is unusual for zach <laughs> i was i should explain that real quick because if you watch this on recording um the i buy um, lots of games in uh, foreign languages because I have a problem. and But I actually like them, especially the Japanese ones, because you use Google Translate with your phone, and it's wild. It makes me laugh all the time. The artwork. It's different. glorious. It is glorious. The translations are just insane. Let me share my stream here, actually, with everybody, just in case we have an audience of more than Keith. Um, currently, we have a live audience of Keith and myself. All right. Well, that's awesome. I like that live so, audience. So that's the two best people. That's okay. This is working though. So watch Skeeter and I talk old games. games. See, I'm not logged in, so I can't chat. So yeah. Keith won't have to put up with any of my shenanigans. Yeah, he, he can hear you though. Oh, I know he can hear me. He's heard me before. All right, here we go. I will now share this. Boom. Failed to post on Facebook. Well, that didn't work. Oh. What are you? What are you trying to post? I'm trying to post the stream, uh, the actual stream uh, link, so everybody can see it. You could do well, can that. Can I just copy it and put you it can. on there? You can. It's supposed to be automated. That's what I get for trying to trying to use the tools I've got. Anyway. Automated. Ah. Automated. So suckers. Anyway, so while you do that, the Pendragon box. This is like exactly how I got it. I looked at the contents real quickly, and I read probably the first. 15 pages of it, thought it was cool, played it in the game, thought that it was old. It wasn't that it was bad. It was that it was had all these suppositions of games from the early 80s that I love in my heart, but when it comes to playing at a table, they aren't as fun. <laughs> so, but most of the Chaosium stuff, I don't know if this box has it. They come with, oh, there we go. We have to we have to talk about that subject more often. Which one? Um, what happens to people when they find a game that hits that that perfect? Oh yeah, this is going to be awesome. I want to play this, and then they get it, and it doesn't measure up, or it's not what you thought you wanted. I have three hundred games. That's well, no, that's actually a, a fairly interesting subject. No, it is because... I'm, I mean, how many how many games between you and me have we bought and looked at once and went, oh, this is not what I wanted? How many, and, ga eh, how many games we bought just for that purpose? Well, it has nothing to do with whether the game is good or bad. It's kind of, I mean, like I always say, I've become so jaded and and just a horrible person from being in the game industry for so many years. I don't know if it's me or if the games are just not 
if I have too high of expectations, and if that is so, how do you help other people not have that issue? Well, I think that part of it for the older games is that we didn't have any expectations. So when we played yeah. them, they were exactly, when they came to us, they were fresh and new. And the whole concept was still fresh and new. So when we got games like, I mean, random stuff, like uh, Aftermath, anything by FGU, like all these other boxes and stuff, they were just amazing because they just had new things. And I'm convinced that part of it is the settings were amazing. And the mechanics themselves were it will be. were secondary, but that's me. Anyway, but check this out, Skier. I bet you know at least five people whose names are on here. I see one. I, I can't read it all. It's it's a little bit blurry. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Oh, God, number six. There you go. Oh, no. So the, the, the first one is just uh. the... Uh, oh, hey, look, sold out. <laughs> hey. They, they stamped sold out inside for the King Arthur Companion. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, no, there's the Pendragon campaign. I've never met Greg Stafford. I've met uh, almost everybody else from Chaosium, though. And then, really? Yeah. I haven't met any of them. You met Sandy Peterson. You were at the. Uh... Well, I. Yes, I. All right. I have, I have met and been able to game with Sandy Peterson. And then I met uh, one of the other guys at PaizoCon, and I think you were there as well. So, anyway, so these are the, these are the standard sheets. They look fine. The battle sequence is something you always see when you see these. Uh, when you get one of these sheets like a that's from wargaming where you get the sequence there's like turn order stuff but uh i found what interesting with pendragon was the whole concept of the winter events and as i flopped over here um it just showed up and i thought that it was really well done that was my favorite part of playing pendragon was the fact that you took the winner off to run your manor of course my night that's kind of awesome it was but my knight had no manor because he was poor and so it was like everybody else got to play that but me so <laughs> but it was it's there oh, well. Hey. We had the marrying table and all kinds of stuff. It actually had a really good feel for for Britain. I mean, they did a nice job making sure. And so the player's book, it was, I liked it. One of the things that I thought was interesting is they handled early on, they handled uh, talking about playing uh, f women in games, especially games based about Arthurian Europe and what women did at the time. And it talked about how you could do it by making them extraordinary and doing uh, things like the Joan of Arc situation and how it didn't affect their gaming which i thought was cool. wait 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 a minute so what year was this released in oh man i think this was 1981 i'm looking so in 1981 chaosium ventured Eight, forth 85. the idea that oh 1980 okay so 1985 chaosium put forth the idea that women could role play i know it was it was in there and actually they, certainly you jest you know, sir what i have to find is they actually they have a really cool statement about it too that I, I, I that stuck out to me that they actually made the, a, an effort to make sure that it wasn't done in a horribly sexist manner <laughs> which i thought was actually big on them because i didn't think at the time i think i knew three women who played out of the 50 people i knew and they were they were awesome it, they're just women characters it actually talks about marriage then women characters and then it talks yeah, about and dowries. for anybody who actually watches this and thinks I'm being shitty, I'm not being shitty in this particular case. I'm I'm trying to throw a comedic light on the fact that women have always been role players and they've always been in the gaming. And there's a part I love right there is where they there have, you go where they have the uh, where's it right your game master might allow women to be knights, and they have no issue with that, which I thought was awesome. Yeah. So anyway, why not? I enjoy the art. I thought that was really interesting when I had read it because you've seen things like it before, but that was the best one I'd seen of its time. And then the, it, there was a big map with it, and I actually have that in a different book. It's a giant map of England, and it was very well Ooh. done. So um, as it goes, I think that Chaosium, they're all based on the basic role playing system, right? Uh, yes. And so if you played one of these, you could easily play uh, Call of Cthulhu, or you could play um, Stormbringer or any of those. And Skeeter has a much better collection of these than I do. Um, I even sent him one, Dreamlands, that I, because in I'm a, a nice person. In a, very, in a very specific genre. Zach's genre is much more broad. Mine is specific <laughs> to Cthulhu. All right, and then the uh, next one I brought what, up. What else do you have for well, us, Zach? what do you know? I have by TSR. Hey! 
birthright. Yeah. What do you know about birthright? Almost nothing. <laughs> Me neither. Though I do know that uh, it was probably the um, people that I respect and talk about these, uh, they said that with all the settings they released when they released 50, uh, it seemed like there was one for everything. This was right. the one that was the best, uh, they thought it was the best developed that was used the least in terms of oh, yeah. for what it deserved. Because no, that's a that's a thing uh, that Birthright did not get the uh, the play and the uh, advertisement and the range so that it deserved. Let's see what we got. We got a bunch of cards. Oh, GM screen looks like. I like C Drake right off the bat. Yeah. So there's we've got a GM screen, and it looks just, just that like is GM some screen. nice art on the front of that GM screen. It Holy is. shit balls. Let's see if I can get it in the, in the camera picture there. Yeah, it looks like a siege. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, nice. I didn't know that came with the GM screen. And yeah. then we have cool. this folding chest that says birthright on top. I'll fold it. Uh, right I like that. Tom Tull is probably jealous of this one for all his old paper stuff. So that's an interesting thing I've never seen a box of TSR. <laughs> Tom Tom Tullis from Fat Dragon Games is going to 3D print one of those out right now as we're talking, probably. To prove me wrong. His old his old uh, like uh, cut and assemble paper models were really cool. So, I have almost, I think, I have about everything they put out I for those paper models. No, actually, and I think that they're well, well done. And then he moved into 3D oh, yeah. printing so fast that we, no one noticed. <laughs> he's a he's a terrain uh, hedge wizard. This is cool. You're right. So these are individual specialty monsters with the uh, all the information in the back. See Drake, yeah, all in color too. And then yeah, there must be an NPC, Gorgon. the Gorgon. Some somebody who used sheet left some of those in there. One of these days, so I can... from what I remember of Birthright, things like the Gorgon. Mm -hmm. Um, the mythological monsters like Gorgon and Medusa, there was like one. Yeah. yeah. So Unique. they, they took that in an interesting direction. Yeah. So they had like the, the, the prime, um, example of what we've used for years as one major creature and pretty I, cool. And I never seen blood abilities. I don't know what that is, but. I I actually think that after opening this up and taking this is this is probably the first look I've looked in this box. I have three other box sets from Birthright, but this it's is a nice map. looking map. Yeah, no, and I'm pretty excited about that because it also oh, had the calendar, a bunch of maps in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. So it's got the calendar and it has a map on it that's kind of nice. It's I like these kind of like they've had the political boundaries, but they still show the woods and the forests in the old style. Yeah. Yep. So there's that one, Aduria. And then the same, the second half, the same map. I know what your plan is by doing, by showing these box sets. You want everybody to be super into picking these up on eBay, thereby increasing the value of your own hoard. I have a feeling that once I show some of them, um, no one will want them from eBay. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, no, no. So uh, this is the same. This is like a board for sequence of play, war card battle. So this is a big battle situation so it's like battle system but not lame so they had cards that went with this yeah i have a feeling that they'll be in here or they'll be cut they're, maybe they're cutouts nope there they are oh wow look okay. at those so you have yep, irregulars but it, it's not like a board game it looks like it's a card based you play your units well keith is mentioning that the uh the armies are on cards and that's yeah. part of play cool do you ever play Battle System? No. Yeah. Well, this is why I'm not cards. a I'm not a miniatures war gamer. I, I'm not either, but I like them. I like to do it. I just don't any good at it. So anyway, so there's the you got the Atlas of the like the setting and the rule book and the Ruins of Empire. I wonder if that's a that is looks like actually it looks like oh. NPCs and uh, places. Looks like kind of a gazetteer or something. It, it does. And then in the MCs, nice. No, my strategy with uh, war games and and miniatures like that is to flip over the table when I'm losing. Well, that's so a, I don't do it very often. Alyssa would have killed you when I did. We did the one with her at a uh, Einflod, 
and it was yeah could you imagine if i flipped over that big table i could see what she would do to you she'd be very upset she would be very cross with me let me grab the other one here real quick hold on all right Let, let's see if we can go three for three with uh box sets that i know absolutely nothing about <laughs> Let's see what Zach pulls out of the archives next. Yep. <laughs> I have never played Paranoia other than my normal day-to-day -day activity. <laughs> Paranoia is... Uh, th this one I just recently got. I actually bought that when I was at Iron Flawed. I bought it at a, um, Powell's in Portland. Which was, I don't think I should play Paranoia. I think that would go poorly. It might, but I think you might be good at it, too. So anyway, wow. I find this interesting. There's a sticker on there. It's the best role-playing game of 1984. So Yeah, I've never heard anything, but uh, people love it. Whenever I'm at conventions and hearing people, oh, I got into a Paranoia game, and it was great. And it's like, I've, all right. I played it uh, three times, and I don't know if you know Hans Cummings. Um he, I know the name. Yeah, he's an author, and he ran his game. And when I very first game I played in 20 years of RPG was Paranoia. My friend that went to GaryCon with me, um, he just loved it. I'm like, I've never heard of it, and I thought I'd try it. It was great. It was a great session run by a great GM. And then I played with Ben Burns. I think you've heard of him. Yeah, uh, I, I sounds familiar. <laughs> <laughs> ben makes a, a Cthulhu adventures for a, a, like on a Kickstarter and such. So he's someone that Skeeter and I both know. He ran I literally a talked to him yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> he, ra he ran a really great game of uh, Call of Cthulhu. It was different than the first one I played. And then I played a third one, and I won't name the GM. Um, but uh, it was lame because he didn't oh, have no. the... Uh, Paranoia requires a sense of humor and a real willingness to let the players F with each other to the point where you wouldn't let that in any other role-playing game because everybody has their own um, mission. They have a, like your own special agenda and they're all in, you know, uh, not in the same order. So you are all like a team working for like a, a hatred, like 1984 computer, but each one of you has your own like a uh, faction and they have like the first church of Christ computer programmer and they have right. the, the vegans and the vegetarians, I think are one. <laughs> so, so it's like me and Ian and Rocky, anytime we're in one of Bill's or right. Matt's games. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I could do this. So when I bought this one, um, it uh, I didn't know it, but they included the Game Master screen as a separate product, but it was already stuck inside there. So oh, wow. take that, Powell's um, books. So but there's oh, that. Oh, wow. Game don't, Master screen. Don't get, don't get shitty when you when you get something hey, for hey, free hey. off somebody. Hey, hey, hey. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Be, be nice. So Be nice. On this one, I, the only person that I, I did not meet, but I saw uh, – because. Uh, Greg Kostikian, or uh, is it Greg Kostikian? I think so. Yeah. Um, he went to North Texas one time, and I never never got a chance to meet him. And I really, he has an eclectic collection of games. Here you go. Oh, there. boy. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Now and, my neck doesn't hurt. Well, one of them is uh, The Price of Freedom, which I absolutely love. Because love, it is so weird to play, like, the Red Dawn. <laughs> and it has, like, a mini war game in it. He has a big, giant explanation inside saying, attention, liberals. This is not anti-you. <laughs> and it just makes me laugh. Awesome. Because uh, Greg is very, very liberal. I mean, to the point of like the, almost the far left. And he's really outspoken about it. And But he wrote that in there because they were trying to make it tongue-in-cheek enough but still be attractive as a product. And I think he felt obligated to write it inside there, and he did. So I thought that was pretty cool. So anyway, so that's the basic. This, the GM screen came with these adventures on them. The book itself explains right in the front because on the computer, that's why. The computer is like, the, it tells you what to do Great. when you do it. And what you'll like about Paranoia when I played it was the uh, fact that it had, uh, everything was clones. You had seven clones. So you were able to perform mighty feats of valor that would definitely wind up in your death. And then three minutes later, the train would show up and your clone would be there with you. Oh, mother of God, I've got to play that game. Yeah, you do. I could burn through those clones in no time. No, and yes, you can. And the best part of you burn through them is that if you use them correctly... The point is just you can use them to hide your true agenda. Like you're going to sacrifice yourself because to save the computer from whatever. And what you're really doing is dropping a grenade down the, you know, 
down the pipe to get to oh. uh, to blow up the cafeteria or whatever. <laughs> that that sounds great. This seems like this would be uh, either a pre or post uh, mutant crawl classics tie-in. It, it has, I think, it's got a similar. It's got some dystopia. flavor. It's got some dystopia involved. This must be some yeah. sheet of hex pad that I don't think it came with that. <laughs> um, I think it does. I think that. I think the the clone part would be fun with Mutant Crawl Classics. What I think about Paranoia, though, is that it's the great con game. It is not a game that I would, like, pick up and go, you know, my group wants to play this for seven weeks. I don't... Right. I, I know that people right. have, but to me, it just was never a... The attraction seemed... It was funny with the right GM, but I just don't see that going forever because comedy and horror are very hard to keep running in a game, I think, to do to be afraid or to actually laugh all the time are difficult when that's the intent. You can laugh and be afraid when it's like part of the overall campaign. That's not the focus, but once you get like chill, I'm going to play chill and chill is like all creepy. But when you're expecting creepy, I don't think it plays as well as when it comes out of nowhere and paranoia has got comedy. And I think it's the same thing. Well, I think it depends on the GM. Cause I was actually in an online, uh, call of Cthulhu game briefly uh before schedule screwed me up and i couldn't do it anymore but it it actually it did work because it it's not necessarily terror 100 percent of the time it, it's always kind of lurking in the background you have to have something else like investigation with terror works great yeah okay and uh, investigation with comedy would work great and it, it depends on the game master because as you have seen any time I've run a game, uh, it gets pretty funny. It was funny and it was also scary, I have to admit. We played a game at Crit Hit Con and he played a Call of Cthulhu type game that he'd been running based on, based in, like right, we were in Phoenix, Arizona, so he had based it right, right near where the hotel was. And uh, it was weird and creepy and, and I won't even give away the ending because I think you should publish it, but it was, uh, it ended with a mind fuck uh, that was, uh, truly of epic proportion. <laughs> well, I appreciate that because that's actually um, it. It's been expanded to a two-part scenario that I'm running at Game Hole. <laughs> Excellent. I, I, so maybe you can, yeah, it's you, you should run it for like it's the guys from Wizards, man. They probably love it. <clears throat> I don't think so. I I don't think they would love that at all. <laughs> so of the three of these, um, the one that I was most familiar with. Um, I played more Paranoia, but I don't really know the rules. I just was a player. I've read through more of Pendragon. Birthright, I like only because I think the setting is cool, but I don't know shit all about it. I think yeah. it, uh, it's something that I would I would try. I'd play any of these in a game, especially in a campaign. I'd do Pendragon again. I think that uh, Birthright is one I'd really be interested in, but you have to have a group that is into it. I think one of the problems right. with those some of the spe special settings like Dark Sun I love Dark Sun. I think it's great. I know we know Anthony Pryor, who did a lot of writing on it, and he uh, talked about how what a joy it was to write for. But I think that anytime you have non Tolkien style elves and special things like that, it becomes hard because what you wind up with is Jeroen or um, with, what's the other one? Uh, oh, a Papel Throne. You get ones that the mm. players don't know the setting. It right. could be great, but it's apes in the time just confusing, I think. So, which is why yeah. every setting seems like it's just Greyhawk. I, it, and it's partially because people want something new, but familiar enough so they can share it. So, anyway. Right. On that note. That makes sense. I think that we can end this one, but we should do this again. And I have lots of box sets and we can do that some other time. I and, think that would be fantastic. And I think we could do some of them. Because I hear that Skeeter Green might want to do a channel of his own. And we could do some of those, make him pick his box sets. <laughs> see see this Skeeter. See, this is what does ms is stand my, for my friend um no <laughs> uh it could i i okay. need some friends especially on twitter <laughs> which seems weird but that i would still be so uh i had to quit twitter and then i started again <laughs> <laughs> because apparently i don't know how to do twitter I stirred up shit right off the bat. <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yeah. Um, and now I've backed off. So, yeah. Yep. 
And so, anyway, um, well, I want to thank you, everybody here. I think that without announcing this in advance, uh, it was probably us and Keith. But uh, no, we been, had like, seven people watching really? live wow. at one point. The, the commenting, yeah. like this is a terrible show. <laughs> well, no, I was just looking at the watching now, and at one point we were at seven. I don't know if we got above that, but considering this whole thing just came together about uh, a half an hour, hour ago. ago. <laughs> Uh, that's not bad. No, but it's fun to talk about games. And I, Skeeter and I talked before about how we talk about them all the time and we might as well do it like this because there are other people that we find interesting. And I find that comments and people that you meet through this is totally worth it. So um, with that, I just want to show these, um, the scene one more time. That's right. I like it. I like it too. It's I think fancy. It is. And it all came because of you. So I I kind of think that font should be Comic Sans. I th almost think it should be one of those ridi more ridiculous than that. And I can do it. Well, I the reason that I think it should be Comic Sans is the the people who do layout and are font knowledgeable, oh, yeah, know. like me, that would just drive them berserk. Do you know Do you know Jim Pinto? I know of him. We have not met because I have also heard that he is a social hermit. Well, he is, but he also has a real thing for anti-comic sans. And one time mm -hmm. he annoyed me with something he said, so I took his name and typed it in comic sans and then had it go all the way around a 3D ball. So it was just oh. like Jim. And so I post that occasionally when he makes wow. me mad. Yeah, see? Yeah. You're a terrible person. I am a terrible see, person. See, I am outwardly a terrible person, but every once in a while... You just sneak one of those digs in there. Well, the the best part is it it only took six minutes because I called my friend Jim Wampler to help me. <laughs> oh no! Please yeah. don't throw the the wizard under the bus. I know he, he was happy to help. Don't don't make him a instigator well, with he, you. He hates Comic Sans too. So, well, I, I, pretty much everyone who knows anything does. That which is, is why I love it. Papyrus is the other yeah. font. So, all right. Well, I will. Uh, See you guys we hopefully soon, but thanks very much, and uh, night, Skeeter. Good night.